headline seen most often in Greece last week. Princess Elizabeth in Athens, it said. And the people of the Greek capital turned out in their thousands to welcome the Princess and the Duke of Edinburgh to their city. The Greek climate led the way with a royal aspect. And it was a day of brilliant sunshine that saw the royal couple's arrival. A morning haze shrouded Magpie as the Duke's frigate that had escorted the Princess's ship from Malta lay in Falloran Bay. And while the Princess and the Duke prepared to go ashore, the King and Queen of the Hellenes arrived at the quayside in readiness to greet their royal guests. The Magpie's launch brought the Princess and the Duke to the jetty, and there they were officially welcomed by King Paul and Queen Frederica. The King is a cousin of the Duke, and this was the royal couple's first visit to Greece. Though primarily it was a private visit, it nevertheless included many public appearances. The first one came when King Paul drove his guests in an open car to the royal palace in Athens, with a big crowd to cheer them on the way. The royal palace was to be only a temporary stopping place, for the princess and the duke were to make their home for the next six days in the summer palace at Tatoi. And it was from there that, escorted by a detachment of the Greek royal horse guards, their royal highnesses and the Greek king and queen set out on a state drive through the streets of Athens. After a short ceremony of welcome at the town hall, the princess and the duke went on to Constitution Square. There, at the tomb of the unknown warrior, the royal couple laid a wreath, which, as the princess had earlier said, underlined anew that the traditional friendship between Greece and Britain is today stronger than ever. Though the royal visitors had no fixed program for sightseeing, foremost on their list, as on that of every visitor to Athens, was a visit to the Acropolis. And on their third day in the city, they went there, being accompanied again by the Greek king and queen, who, with their children, were to show them round the Parthenon and the other famous buildings. As the royal party drove back again to the palace, from there to set off for other visits, this was the scene they saw, the Parthenon at dusk. And against the night sky, this great temple stood out, floodlit, in honor of the royal visitors from Britain. 